Hey, what's up everybody? It's me, Jordan, and I'm back with another drawing video. In this video, I'm gonna be doing the eraser only art challenge. So I'm gonna start out using these pencils to set down the base and then no more pencils, just these guys. So I've got a kneadable eraser and then for all the details, I've got an electric eraser. I could make a joke about girls being familiar with this sound, but I won't because that's inappropriate and I don't make those types of jokes here. So I want to give a shout out to Jazza, who I saw do this challenge a few weeks back and I thought it looked really fun. So I wanted to do my own version of it and add a horror spin to it. So I hope you guys enjoy and let's do it. I'm starting out by sketching down the base. I'm not worried about having it all perfectly smooth. Having a sketchy look is fine for this challenge in my opinion. If you want to spend ages and have it all perfectly smooth and black, go ahead. But prepare to say goodbye to your pencils as they get worn down to nothing. And hello to repetitive strain injury in your wrist. Yeah, I'll just go with the sketchy look. You want to get this as dark as you can, so I'm using a 7B and an 8B pencil. I totally destroyed my pencils doing this. It wears it down so much, but trust me on this. You want to get it really, really dark. I did a practice run before this one and I didn't go dark enough and it just looked terrible. So get it dark, then you can have the contrast. When you erase it, it will actually show up because if you don't go dark enough, you won't really see the erased bits properly and it won't look good. I know from experience. Next up, I went in with my kneadable eraser and I soon found out it pretty much does nothing. But it let me kind of rough in some of the areas so I knew where to go in with my electric eraser, which actually does something. So I used that basically because I can't use a pencil so I can't sketch out where I want to go. And if I went in first with the electric eraser, I could stuff it up. So going in first with the kneadable eraser gave me a really faint indication of the areas that I should be erasing more heavily. So that was kind of helpful, but kind of didn't really do much either. This is pretty much one of the first times I've actually used this electric eraser. I bought it because I just like buying art supplies. I've kind of got a problem. I guess I've kind of been scared to use it because it's pretty intense and it feels like it's going to chew the paper up. But it actually seems to work pretty well, especially if you've got to erase some really dark lines. It takes a little bit of time to get used to it with the tip of it spinning because it kind of catches on the paper. So you have to hold it like tight enough that it doesn't get kind of caught up and move along the paper in a way you don't want it to. For this type of thing, I was just trying to get some texture and just kind of move it around. So it didn't really matter. I didn't want to do anything too precise. And it's pretty hard to do precise work with this eraser because you don't really have a fine tip to work with. You can kind of sharpen it by running it on its side to create a bit of a tip, but that takes quite a long time and then the tip just runs out so quickly anyway. So I would just change out the eraser tips completely when they started getting a bit blunt. Using the flat edge, you just kind of tilt it and then you can get some pretty good details with that. Another challenge with using the electric eraser is actually just holding the button down. It kind of cramps your hand up because it's not really meant for extended use like this. So it gets a bit uncomfortable doing this crab claw, trying to hold the button down and draw with it. But you get used to it and I think it would really vary depending on which electric eraser you have. The one that I've got is really, really big. I guess you could probably get some smaller ones which are more reasonably sized compared to this massive thing, but mine's probably turbo power or something. <laughs> it runs on two AA batteries and it's just an eraser, so I don't know why it needs to be that big, but it is, so I work with it. It's not about the size, it's about how you use it. On that note, I think I'm going to leave the commentary here. I've got a short creepy pasta I wanted to read. In the background, I don't really have too much else to say about the drawing process or the eraser process for this, so I thought I'd read a story for you guys and I'll just finish it off in the background. For you guys who are new to my channel, that's what I like to do from time to time. I do these creepy pasta videos, so if you enjoy this, maybe check out some of them. 
if you're more into the commentary stuff like the earlier part of this video where I say inappropriate stuff and make stupid jokes, maybe check out some of my other anime drawings. I've got plenty of them on my channel. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the video and I hope you guys enjoy the story. This is such a stupid idea. Why are we even doing this? Those were the thoughts that arose in my mind on that chilly, eerie evening. Sitting in the passenger seat of the dimly lit car, which belonged to my best friend Matt, I peered out the window and glanced up at the beautiful yet ominous night sky. The moon was huge and luminous. I looked at my watch. It was just about midnight, a time when most normal people would already be in bed. I glanced over at Matt, who was gleefully driving to our destination, seemingly unaware of how stupid this whole thing was. Why are we doing this, Matt? You know nothing's gonna happen, I said, slightly annoyed at the entire situation. Matt looked at me with aggravation. You agreed to come! So stop being a little bitch and try and have some fun, he snapped. After about five more minutes of driving, Matt stopped the car abruptly. Here we are, he proclaimed with genuine excitement. He then turned to me and corrected himself. Well, almost. We have to do a little walking first. Yeah, sure. Not like I had better things to do, I sighed. I followed Matt as he walked down a steep grassy hill and ended up in the woods, pitch black. I can't see a damn thing, I exclaimed. Don't worry dude, I brought a flashlight. He pulled a small flashlight out of his jeans pocket. Of course, I muttered under my breath. We continued through the woods for what seemed like an hour. Finally, we arrived in front of a vast, deep tunnel. I looked at Matt. You can't be serious. What the hell is this thing? The Devil's Chamber. Here we are, let's go, Matt said, dangerously eager to go inside the death trap. I stopped him. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're not going in there, are we? We're gonna kill ourselves. What if the flashlight dies? What if there's someone else in there? What if there's... What if you stopped being such a pussy and just walked in? Matt interrupted me in a half-joking tone. Come on, let's go. I reluctantly followed him into the tunnel. It was cold, dark, and damp. Insects were everywhere, not to mention all the dead rats, mice, and of course, the occasional decaying cat. There were all sorts of graffiti covering the walls. I instantly felt something very strange through my body. It felt as if a bubble of negative energy was trying to push itself into me. I was overwhelmed with a sense of dread. However, I remembered how damn excited Matt was to be here. So I kept my mouth shut and continued to follow behind him. As we reached further into the depths of the tunnel, Matt pulled out his camera and decided to take a few pictures. For the next couple of minutes, all I heard was the loud snap of Matt's camera paired with a flash that nearly blinded me. Suddenly, I felt a small hand on my shoulder. I quickly turned around, but of course, nobody was behind me. I shrugged it off and kept walking. Maybe it was a bug, I thought, in an attempt to calm my nerves. The tunnel became colder and darker the further we walked. How long is this tunnel? I asked Matt. He turned around to me and smirked. Would you relax? We'll turn back in a minute. I noticed that he was beginning to feel a bit nervous. 
You're right, though. We have been walking for a while. Let's turn around. We began to walk back to the entrance. I couldn't wait to get out. As we were walking, I abruptly heard something that sounded like a young girl's laughter. Then I felt it again. The hand on my shoulder. The same small, childlike hand. This time, it was more assertive, like something was really trying to get my attention. Again, I tried to tell myself that it was probably just a bug or something. I just wanted to get the hell out of this place. Finally, after what seemed like hours, we reached the entrance and quickly walked outside. We hurried through the woods and up the hill, glancing over our shoulders every so often to make sure nothing was following us. At last we arrived at Matt's car. I wasted no time opening the passenger door and hopping in. Matt then got inside after me and started the car. He pulled his camera out of his backpack. Alright, let's see what we got, he said with a radiant grin. The two of us looked carefully at every picture. Nothing. Just a bunch of dirt, concrete and spiders. Then we came across a picture of me standing in front of Matt. We both looked closely and gasped. There was a small childlike hand gently resting on my shoulder. He had figured since it didn't move when it was being watched, he could look at it and just keep it frozen. It worked, but when he stared at it, he felt sick, like something was clawing its way out of him. His worst memories resurfaced in his brain. Among them, an embarrassing date, a lost pet, his sister's funeral.